To not good enough, the D and D show where it's just all cringe all the time. I'm your host and DM Dylan, and you know these are my wonderful players. Say hello. Yo. Hello. <laughs> They're all assholes. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Anyways, let's begin <laughs> with a bit of monologuing from yours truly, because apparently I like the sound of my own voice. Uh, Is it a monologue or a soliloquy? It's a monologue. I don't have, I don't have a poem. No, a soliloquy is when it. Are we really just doing an English lesson yeah. right now? Anyway. Most, if not all of us are. Milos was a theater major uh, back in his home village. Uh, <laughs> that is now canon. That is now canon. Yes. Anyways. We should get advantage on charisma now. No. <laughs> Performance. I didn't say he was a good theater major. <laughs> Anyways, Mumford, last time, Mumford got a call from his sister, quotation marks, out the window. Um, and Mumford, I'm gonna have you kind of walk into the drawing room in which your father and mother are kind of, um, they're just sitting in separate chairs smoking, like a... Like a pipe. Your father's smoking a pipe. Your mother is just reading reading a newspaper. And you kind of tell them that you just got a phone call from Lotus. And your father just drops his pipe. Well, drunk, drunk, Too bad it wasn't a glass, because then it could have shattered for dramatic effect. No, it wasn't glass. It was so... knocks over a glass. <laughs> Mumford, you run in and just knock over a glass. Bartrand is now angry, trying to clean up. And as you say... Sorry, Mumford. I mean, sorry, Bartrand. <laughs> <laughs> and you hear... And you hear the... Like... The dustpans, like... Br brush and... Like, Pan, just drop as you say, I just got a phone call from Lotus. Because Lotus was his favorite. <laughs> yeah, yeah, figures. Okay. Aww. So we need to go over there right now, I think. Uh, um, I'm gonna do that. And, and I will be stopped, please. Okay. <laughs> please. They they are not they're just in shock right now as you run out the door. Uh Val, you are again in the backyard kinda of looking at the magical blooms that spray out magic every time someone sneezes into them. And Polar, you are you are with your fa your your adopted father as you see him burst out the front door, you kinda of jump out the window and can I have a, uh, Oh yes. Can I have nice. an can I have an athletics check? Or acrobatics, whichever you're more proficient Definitely. in. Definitely. Go foot boy, go. Ten. <laughs> I am in the wrong chat. <laughs> That's always good. I almost was. And then I wasn't because I was paying attention for once. It how do you pay attention? <laughs> God damn it. Alright. Uh, ten. You... Like, <laughs> See, what you're trying to do is you think your, your dad's still happy. Like, he's still not traumatized by whatever is going on. And you try to hug him, but you miss... And wham! Now, I believe you have slow fall. 
How much is slow fall up to for you right now? 30. So, like, I'm good for, like, 60 feet. Okay. At least. Eighteen, so that just immediately gets absorbed by your slow fall. So you just land on your feet, and you go up to your dad, and you hug him, but oh. he's pulling away. You don't actually... What? You don't know what happened. Yeah. You weren't there what, when it happened. You weren't there when the phone call was made. So... Stepped outside. It's safe to say that you don't know what's happening. Hey, Dad, what's up? Um, teammate was in trouble. Gonna fix that. Yes. Teammate? Yeah, one of my teammates in best ball. I think we're still teammates off season. But yes. Yeah, oh, yeah. It's cool. Roll a deception check. Oh, God. And. <sighs> yep. Insight, please. This will be interesting. Oh! <laughs> oh no! All right, Mumford. As you say, my teammate, you you are about to hesitate, but you immediately catch yourself, and your voice isn't monotone, but it's my teammate was hurt. I just I just gotta go help them. Sounds like a good time. Um. Adventure. Yes. Pol is Polaris go adventures here and tell me about them later. Oh. What? But Roll a persuasion check. Uh, dude, don't like that. <sighs> Am I gonna do what? Uh, Am I rolling? <laughs> What's your passive insight? Passive insight. I don't think it's great. Twelve. Yeah. Roll, oh my gosh. Roll an insight check, please. That twenties. The first like four rolls of the game are nat twenties now. All right. Um. Thanks for the nat twenties, Dylan. No problem. I I think I just think to give you all my luck. Um, so, you, you, after him trying to deceive you that first time and succeeding, you hear him say, why don't you have your adventures here and tell me all about them? And you think, oh no, something definitely is wrong. You I was def, he was definitely fine and then like, okay. Like, What's going on? You you go with your father everywhere, even to his his games. Like, so mm -hmm. this is unusual for your father to leave you home. He said it was a personal problem. You know how how Oak is kind of cagey about everything. Deception check. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> That's a 12. I was going to let you keep that 20. I was, I was going to let you keep that 22, by the way. I just want to say. No, no. I meant, I meant Polaire. Golly. Oh, okay. But, I, did, I feel very bad about lying to my son. As you, as you're, you say, he, he's very cagey. Your voice catches. Like, he's... Very cagey, and Polaire, you immediately pick up on that, and you know, and you know something is absolutely wrong. What do you want to do, Polaire? You, there's a couple routes you can take with this. What do you want to do? Yeah, I'm considering. Yeah, okay. I, I'll just hang out here, I guess. Then, I'll see you later. I feel like you um, know what I'm going to say. Yeah, yes. Deception check. Oh, 16. 
Mumford, give me an insight check for me, buddy. Hey, no worries. Mumford is not smart. <laughs> he has showcase here. He's got a pen. Mumford, that you... That was a 16 and a 10. You immediately believe your son in th when he says, Yeah, I'm gonna stay here. And you... Like, son, lie to me. <laughs> And you... Why would my dad lie to me? Oh my god! You walk to the car. Uh, would it be faster to run or go by car? It would be faster to go by car. Okay. I, um, so, let me tell you the lay of the land a bit. The Atlas Mansion is in the outskirts of the city, like, in the outer limits of the city of Genastris, because... As most mansions are, because mansions can't really stay inside the city. So. Also, I think Lance would not do good with his neighbors. No offense. Exactly. Lance does not do well with neighbors. You guys had an apartment before, and every time someone had loud music playing from downstairs, and that's like two floors down... It was like you, you just saw Lance stomping his foot. Lance is a Karen confirmed. <laughs> but like, not in a terrible way. In like the... Look at all these Karens I got for parents. <laughs> um, so, Mumford, so I'm you... I'm still drawing Bill Cipher on the roll 20. You head to the car. Polaire, what are you going to do? Um, I would like to sneak into the trunk, I guess. Would you like to n let uh, notify Milos and Val Karen? Oh, yeah, that would probably be a good idea. Um, so I go to them really quick because, you know... I you bamf in the I'm... shadows, like... Oh, yeah. That's a thing I can do. Yes. Um... And so, uh, where, I know where Valkarin is, but where's Milos? Milos is with Valkarin, I'm gonna say that. Okay, cool. Milos is looking at the very pretty flowers and wondering if he can take those to Elmo. Again. Okay, hey guys, so, um. <laughs> hey guys, so, um, Mumford is leaving and I think he's really upset about something and he's not telling me and so that's making me a little nervous, so you guys want to come? Yeah, well, yeah, Milos wants to go on an adventure, but we cannot take too long uh, to incur, in, incur fears. It'll be fine. We can call her if you're going to miss it, and then she'll be completely understanding. She's a really nice lady. Come on, let's go. Okay. Val? Yeah, I'm willing to come. All right. Don't break my All right. So... This is going to be a little hard. Are you going to um, I, Are you going to wait for Mumford to leave and kind of follow him in another car? I okay. I have a couple of ideas for that. Okay. One of them is um uh Milosh and Valkarin talk to Mumford while I get in the car and then they can follow, so then it's like at least someone is with him. Distraction. Um, or we could all just follow. Or they could just try and hitch a ride with Mumford. What do you get? Because they're adults and they might, you know. <laughs> yeah. Because Because ad <laughs> adults always agree with everything. <laughs> I mean, adults tend to... They're, they're, they're less emotionally vulnerable or something. Sure. <laughs> you know, Mumford might be protecting Polaire. So. So, um. What plan, what plan do you think will do well? I'll, I'm talking to specifically Milos and Valkyrie. Milos can, um, can break into one of them. They can break into one of them. And then follow him in a separate car. Uh, 
Could anyone understand that? Her. Um, can you say that again, Val? Send in the bat. Oh, send in the bat? Someone. Bruce is the best bat. Alright. Because he's me and can fly. So, you want to send in the bat? Right, that's the best bat for keeping track of them, because that they And then they can be fly. Best bat. God damn it. <laughs> Craig crashed. Uh Craig crashed? Again? Crashed. Damn it. Oh, but I love Craig. Where did you see Craig go? Uh he just records the audio for e each of us individually. Oh. Oh, so you can Mm-hmm. Do the thing. Mm -hmm. Now recording. <clears throat> wow, that was really loud. Right? Uh, Alright. So. Craig is a threat. Yeah, you have those three choices. You can send in the bat, send in Pilaire, or, you know, all follow in a separate car. Uh, Bruce just follows, and I don't know what comes after that. Uh, I have a familiar, so that, I think that would be the best way to track where someone's going. We could send then, in the bat and send in Plur. Or you could. That's a good idea. Or you could send in the bat. Send in Pilaire, Send in the bat, and then just kind of follow more at a distance. Don't send in the Milos. That would be bad. <laughs> Milos can fit in the trunk. Oh, okay. Maybe he's super flexible. That, or if he follows and has a newspaper and a funny mustache on, no one will know. Don't forget sunglasses and a top hat. Don't forget sunglasses and a top hat. <laughs> Milos can be very inconspicuous, guys. He can even, again, he's a theater major. He can disguise his voice and his accent uh, flawlessly. Okay. okay, Milos, but, can um, you can you please speak cars? common? <clears throat> to be or not to be, that is the Milos, I do not think this will help, but you know what? If you guys choose that plan, I won't I won't stop you. I, I think that's the best. <laughs> what are you guys gonna do? I think I think it's really that that would be really entertaining, but also I want to be in on this. I want to be in on the action. Like okay. Milos has already made up his mind. Uh, I want to get in a, I want to get into a car chase and then just pop my head out of the back seat and be like, "Hey, Dad, I've been here all along." I. <laughs> it's so bad to want to stick my head through the back seat. Milos is just going to go ahead and go up to uh, Mumford um, <laughs> and try to distract him and hope that like the rest of you figure out what you're going to do. Um, so yeah, Milos, he's just going to walk up to Mumford and be like, Little, little, little lion man, Milos has words to say to you. Pilaire wants to be in the room with him. Can words later? Words are very important um, because Milos, uh, you do not know if you knew this, but Milos... Uh, back in home country was uh, a theater major. Milo, sh I'm going to need you to roll a deception check with advantage. And Mumford, I'm going to need you to roll insight. Just to, like, keep your, keep, just to keep Mumford distracted. Got a 14. <laughs> Can I, um... Sneak into the at least start to sneak into the trunk. I will do you one better. You can see that the car has is casting a shadow behind it. But I'm still gonna have you roll a stealth check to open the trunk. So uh probably no surprise anyone. 
24. Uh, Mumford uh, <laughs> is not falling for my shit. Milos, you, Milos, what did you roll? Just to... So even with advantage, I don't know what the statistics are for this. So with advantage, I rolled a two twice. That is, that is one in 400. There we go, your, yeah. Your dice do not like you. Seriously? <laughs> Um, Polair, how... I, I did drama in high school. Can we... Actor talk later, please? Polair, uh, with Milos failing that... <laughs> um... Milos can tell you of his dating, uh, in Paris. I don't know where you're going, but Milos will go with you. You need friends. No, it's a personal thing. Milos, uh, Polair... Can you please roll another stealth check? Because you now have disadvantage. Oh, oh. oh no! <laughs> Mumford, what is your passive perception? Uh, Mumford's passive perception is 18. Uh, you immediately hear as the trunk <laughs> opens. <laughs> We should have sent in the bat. Also... We should have sent in the bat. Like we're going to send in the bat. Well, you all were taking too long, so Milos was just kind of like, I'm going to take it upon myself to decide for everybody. <laughs> uh, Mumford, you hear tukunk, and you see Polaire wide eyed looking at you. <laughs> I also need to practice my driving really bad, and I don't want anyone to be in danger. <laughs> I just sit I... in the trunk. I don't close it, but I just sit <laughs> in it. <laughs> I just need... No, I can practice on my own. I'm very good doing that. I, I slowly start to close the trunk. <laughs> I can't believe this distraction is actually working! <laughs> I'm gonna oh, need... I'm gonna take a different color. Oh! <laughs> Oh my god, yes. Okay. Um Mumford, do you just leave Milosh? Uh if I wake Polaire from the trunk and that's not Polaire from the trunk, very safe. <laughs> I can ride in the back seat. <laughs> so you should probably help him out. I'm gonna practice the drive. I'm a good driver. I can help you. I can help give you some my, some of my driving tips. <laughs> Val, as the, as they're having this conversation, do you send in Bruce? Absolutely. And um, I'm just I'm going to you know do those look through his eyes, listen to his ears thing, and just have uh, Samuel beside me to wake me up if anyone. Can. Okay, so, Bruce flies overhead. Can I have a stealth check from Bruce? I'll give him advantage. <laughs> Mumford, you see this bat. <laughs> what do you do when you see this bat? <laughs> I'm gonna need deception check from Valkaren with disadvantage. <laughs> and Mumford make an insight check. Mumford, you know that's that. A nat twenty from Mumford. And a natural and two from Val. Mumford, you know immediately that this is Valkaren's bat. Okay. I don't want to worry you guys because I am a okay. 
<laughs> yeah, well, okay. See, the thing about not worrying us, well, me specifically, is that you don't go out of your way to not worry me unless there's something to worry me. Also, how are you three letter? You said you are letter A, letter O, and letter K. Me lost is not understood. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Uh, uh, can I explain that to you later? <laughs> <laughs> Mumford, do you just run to a car now? Yeah, Mumford run to car. <laughs> um. Okay, Polaire, you, you see your, your father look at Milos and then think, this is gonna take too long, and just Boom! <laughs> Burst! Running! Towards... Uh, towards the car. Are there any shadows near the car? Um, Make a perception I'm check. I'm chase after Mumford, uh, <laughs> to regale Mumford about his acting days, because he also is very excited to finally talk about his acting days. Dexterity check Eight, from... Dexterity check from Milos. Yes, there is... A shadow cast between the fence and the car. I think Milo's uh, description's poor. Uh, <laughs> no. I'll just grab a D4. Oh no! Secrets don't make friends, Milos, please take three points of bludgeoning damage. Uh oh. Is the shadow on the passenger side or the driver's side? It's on the passenger side, near there. Uh, okay, cool. Bam! Uh, can I have a stealth check from Paul Air? Eighteen. Eighteen. You make it to the car. You jimmy the trunk open so it doesn't make noise. It goes. I, can, 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 can I um go in the back seat instead of the trunk? Like, lay down on the floor in the back seat. <laughs> you know what? Sure, you open the door as Mumford is too distracted to go in, like, to, like, check the back seat. You get in, lie down, close the door as silently as possible, and Mumford <laughs> does drive off. Yes. Mumford, I am going to need a dexterity check with proficiency. Yes. <laughs> you know how to drive, apparently. I, learned how to I just drive. needed some driving practice. <laughs> I'm just gonna get... What? No, just... Oh, oh no. Uh, my perfect... It's an eight. Was not added. <laughs> you drive oh, into a wall and you hear... On the highway and pull air. Oh no! You take three points of bludgeoning damage as you feel this hard turn and you slam against the door. Do you react? Um. I imagine that that wouldn't be a voluntary thing. <laughs> yes, so I'm gonna say you say, Ow! <laughs> Mom. Not even. A roll. No, no, no roll. Roll to not scream in pain. No, no roll. Mumford. Uh, uh, okay. Okay. It's, it's just. Would I you lie about it being perfect? Would uh, you like to roll <laughs> a wisdom check to see? If you notice your son screaming in pain. Perception? Yeah, sure. Make a perception check. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, you hear your son screaming in pain. It's kind of noticeable. It wasn't exactly a high DC. Eighteen, mm -hmm. baby. You. Um, oh yeah, that's what, something else. We need to start saying more of our numbers because they don't see them. Yeah. You Take you better word pictures too. I, I feel like I don't need to say more numbers. People people can infer what I've been building so far. You, you hear a guttural guttural scream. 
And I do recognize the voice of Polaris. Yes. So, Disregard for that. <laughs> no, no, are, are, are you okay? I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm okay. I'm not here. It's fine. Here. You don't see me. I love you very much, but I know you're right here. <laughs> driving task. Uh, yeah, please make another dexterity check with proficiency. Okay. Blair, do you sit up? Um, I'm taking a moment to sit up, but then, yeah, I sit up. Okay. Buckle in. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, that's better. Yeah, yeah, you, you don't crash into any cars as you start to drive towards the, uh, meteor crater. Um. I would like to drop Polaire off if, an ice cream stand close by here. Hey, I am, I am a chub. You can't just leave me alone. Right. <laughs> Val and Milos, what are you doing? Also, Val, I'm going to allow you to uh, roll another stealth check with advantage for the Bruce. I'm going to say you sent him when Polaire and Mumford left. Yes, that was going to be awkward. Which means, unfortunately, I don't quite hear what Milos is saying, but Samael... So Samael kind of pulls your, pulls your hand along, leading you to the car. Um, and three, four. See if Samuel comes in handy. Wait, who? Sorry, what? Skeleton. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, with advantage. Fifteen. I did not know yeah. bats were not that stealthy. That's kind of surprising. But, uh, yeah, Samuel just drags me along. Yep. So you guys get in the car. Milos, I'm gonna have you roll a dexterity check. Hell yeah. Watch me fucking fail this. Ooh, watch me, watch me, Ooh, watch me, watch me. Watch me whip. That is an eight. You get out of the driveway. Alright, progress. And you knock out one of the mirrors. <laughs> Good thing we have a high uh, budget for this. I'm just trying to develop Karen, uh, who's coming to me from the past. Just like, do not kill this. Milos broke here. We, we, we will blame it on the, 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 the raccoon. Yes, rac rac we, we saw the, the raccoon's uh, the take, off, take off mirror for some reason. Because they are rascally evil. Creatures. It's okay. We, we keep going now. Val, are you telling Milos directions? Uh, yes. Alright. Uh, I can't hear a word you say. Yeah. Um, Milos, as you're driving, Val is just kind of saying, Where are you? Uh, I can't hear you. I don't know why I'm talking, but... Nah, nah, and I'm gonna let you roll dexterity checks with advantage now. Hell yeah. Probably still not fail it really bad. Oh, hell yeah. That's what I'm th counting on. You You're counting on it? Kinda, yeah. Eleven? You don't hit anything. Yeah. Are you sure oh, you don't need new dice, Jake? <laughs> Uh, you, you miss an exit and have to turn mm -hmm. onto oh, yeah. another exit and turn. 
So you just make a giant U-turn. And Mumford, you and Polera are the first ones to get to the Cataclysm. Cataclysm! <laughs> Along with Bruce, who Bruce just sits on Polaire's shoulder now. I have a Bruce. I cannot, you do not understand how excited I am to have a Bruce. And don't want to dampen your excitement, but the what is gonna happen is gonna be a lot. And you, what do you mean? see. A pale furred, like, you can see the pale fur on her head, kneeling in front of the crater. You just see... Oh, I'm already running over to hug her. Okay, you run over to hug her. Polara, do you go with? Uh, no, I'm kind of, like, staring, frozen in shock still. So, you go up here... Claire, you, you, what do you do after Mumford just fully dashes towards it, his sister? Um, I like start to go after him. Also, are we I uh, are we supposed to have a map up? Not yet. Okay, cool. Um, I like start to go after him, but then I just don't because I don't know mortality or something. I'm gonna say you're about there. Mumford, you go to hug your sister. But she feels strange. Mm. Almost like her body is bad. almost decay is almost decayed. It's oh. skinny. And as you turn her around, you see the Y incision. And her. She has no eyes. Polaire, what do you do? Um, I'm assuming that I'm almost out. Like, I can't see it very well. But, like, the minute I know that that's not right, I, like, sprint over and uh, grab Mumford, I guess. As you grab Mumford, can I have de dexterity save? Val Karen and Milo are just about to get there. Can I have dexterity saves from both of you? Great. That is not how you spell anything. That okay. does not it's make it. A barbarian. Oh no! That does not make it. <laughs> it's a good time to be a monk and roll a two. Doing okay, and then it was like, you know what? Why even bother? The dice rolls are for narrative purposes. <laughs> okay, so here's how this is gonna go. You, <laughs> you see eight beads just get thrown at you. Oh, even better. Beads? Beads. Question mark? And as Beans? they land on... Even more visual <laughs> As they land onto the ground... <laughs> you just see colors. And Polaire, what you see... Is a violet smoke. And that so is... Not a vi vi vivid hallucination. And That's a first. And when this happens, you immediately go blind. Oh, peachy. Mumford, you see a red smoke just surround you, and you're like, "Where? Where's Polaire? Where's Polaire?" And you get hit with. Forty-one points of damage. Mm -hmm. <gasps> oh, I'm glad that didn't hit me. 
41 points of fire damage. Pol oh. Val, Karen, and Milos, what you see from a distance is these eight beads and smoke start popping out from each of them. And you see um, Polaire in the middle of the purple smoke and just... <laughs> Yeah, you see, yeah, you see, Polaire and and Mumford get to Lotus and just smoke. You see these eight colored smokes. And uh, uh, okay, so uh, so I guess like help, help me visualize here. Uh, you said that we took a exit, basically made a huge U turn. So have we made it to where they are now? Yes. Or are we seeing this from like? No, you've made it from. Like, you've made it to where they are now. And basically, you see, like, four buildings, and past them, you see the crater that you saw in in our pre-session. Uh -huh. And Mumford, like, holding what seems to be a white lionel, and then just smoke. And then you see a red smoke, and then fire just explode. No. How close is Mumford to the line? Uh, good f 10 feet. You are about, and I'm going to change it so now people can see it. Oh. oh. That's a big boy. <laughs> you are. See, I make some good maps. If you don't say so yourself. 60 feet away. 60 feet away? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Before we, before we start, before you have that idea, everyone roll initiative. See, you got some dudes. I got a nine. 10, 12. So this guy got a 12. A very mighty 9, might I add. Um, yeah, that. That's a 10. Oh, and that is a 19. So that's 20. Alright. Everyone start telling me. Their numbers. I got a twenty-one. Twenty-one. A fifteen. A fifteen. Yes. Okay. I may be blind, but that doesn't mean I don't want to punch things. Uh, Milos got a nine. Val got a fourteen. Wait. Uh... Ah yes, and the skeleton in the bed. Right. So they all got nine, and Bruce got eight. Okay. All right. So I'm just gonna add those two. Oh. So it is. Well, so, so would me and Valkyrie not get a surprise round? Um. The, the you no, the skeleton's on your team. Uh, you and you, the skeleton, the bat, and Val all get surprise rounds. Polaire and Mumford do not. Okay. So here's what I'm thinking. Uh, and Milos will convey this to the skeleton, uh, who I guess is sitting in the back seat, um, and Valkyrian. Um, so, uh, Milos has his hand firmly on the uh, steering wheel. Says, hey, Valkyrian, Mr. Skeleton Man, uh, I have an idea. Okay, I do not know who that person is, but they are causing harm to my friend. I don't like that. So I'm going to drive cars and smash into them, and then we all get out and beat them up while they are down on the ground. Sounds good to me. Uh, I do want to point out do we have tokens for. Uh, uh, Samuel and Bruce? No. 
Did you find fun? Yeah, yeah. Add them to the list of <laughs> You're going to forget. Yes. Because I'm going to forget. Because we are not good. Uh, God. There's Samael. It is a square. Oh, just kidding. And there's Bruce. Is that the one gif of a skeleton dancing? <laughs> and here is the initiative order. So. Wait, where's Milos? Oh, right, Milos. Oh, in the bottom. Yeah. Uh, You're above Bruce. Yes. I didn't actually know that it would go into roll 20 as well. That's cool. So, first are the soldiers. These, there are two, uh, I think Do they're... they not get, a, not get a surprise round? Yeah. I mean, the soldier, and Val. Soldiers get a f f surprise round first, because they also get a su surprise round. Oh, fun. So, two of them are on the roofs. Up here. Boys on the roof. Putting on the roof. And this guy over here. Oh, wait, no, these are thugs. These guys are soldiers. And this guy's gonna move down. <laughs> that is a sniper, I see. Hey, is that. Are those those guys that shot you that one time? Just kidding, I can't see them. I could check. Mumford, first, you're gonna get hit. Ooh, oh, no. Oh, no. That's. Cool. That is a 23 to hit, Mumford. Yep, that's it. Oh no, 22. Oh, you're right. That's just the number. No, you still <laughs> hit. <laughs> that's a D8. Um, you see, as this fire ball of fire comes out, you see this blade just flash at your shoulder. And hit you in the burning flesh. So it just singes more. So that is that eight damage from Oof. the longsword. The other two soldiers. Uh, if I can find the other one. This guy's just going to be over here. Yep, alright. Next is Val. Oh, darn it. Um, well, I think if you like to don't do press the car, I'm just going to use my ready action to ready my reaction and to jump on. Alright. Well, I'll use my bonus action to start my your blade song. So as you pull out your rapier, it just hums into this battle music, like fine, like final battle music. Why do I hear boss music? <laughs> Why do I hear boss music? Um, next is. The Biomancer. Biomancer gets a, a surprise round too. Yeah. You want to know why? Do you think the college drew it? You want to know why? Because <laughs> right after the pops of smoke come out, the what looks to be corpse of Lotus turns oh. into this 
beautiful half elven sorceress. Yeah. I didn't see this, of course. No, oh yeah, no, you don't see this because you're blind. <laughs> I'm going to be immensely confused later. By the way, it it is fully raining right now. Oh, fun. So. At least you're not still on fire, Mumford. <laughs> For now. I said it'd be more. Well, Mumford, you won't be on fire. Uh. uh, Polar and Mumford, can I please have a constitution save? <laughs> 18. So you had a bad day. <laughs> 18 just <laughs> makes it. Oh. But ten does not. That is... 8d8. Oh, I should probably keep track of the spell slots. Where is my notes app? There it is. Okay. So, he's used his only 7th level spot. And he's used a fifth level slot. Seven, four, so fifteen plus four, nineteen, twenty, twenty five, thirty, thirty four, thirty eight. All right. This is fine. Polar can I use my reaction to heckish rebuke this guy? Yes, you can hellish rebuke this guy this guy after you take thirty eight points of cold damage and Mumford you take nineteen cold damage. Oh, cool. <laughs> How what kind of damage? Cold. cold. Dang. So we're um, gonna random roll our new characters, right? <laughs> 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 I'm sure you won't die. <laughs> but yes, heckish rebuke. Heckish rebuke this motherfucker. I am a child. I'm not allowed to say these words, you know? Um. Just remember minus uh, L at the end of the. End of the. Command. <laughs> I did that. I literally. Oh, minus that. I. Sorry. Thanks. I'm sorry. I made a mistake. Yeah. Well, that's what they always say. That's fourteen. Uh, deck save of thirteen. <gasps> so deck. Please tell me you made a critical fail. Uh, that is an eight. It, it actually should I'm be level looking. two. So roll one more d10. Nope. <laughs> I know. It's a three. But it's still 17 damage. So 17. Yeah, I heard. Or saw. It is not these days. Damn it! Every time someone someone's messed messes up, like someone's stuff messes up, it switches out all the squares. Just leave them for now. Anyways, it'll work, work itself out when she comes back. Anyways, uh, seventeen damage taken to that to the biomancer. Now it's. Yeah. Now it's all the thugs. I... <laughs> um, Maybe I should have saved the rebuke. But I'm gonna die either way. So wait, never mind. Okay, so first thing, first thing first, I'm gonna roll four attacks. Two of them are going to Milos and Val. And you know what? 
another one's gonna go to. So this guy's gonna come out. Yeah, you get you get. I'll I'll give you guys half cover. Uh, I, bl I believe that's plus two, yes. I'm just staring at the pink person next to Mumford on the thing, and that just feels off-putting. So... No, th this, this one, the very... It's clearly a skirt, as though women can't wear normal armor. All four are... Th are going to use their sniper rifles. That misses. That misses. Uh, Val, does a 16 hit? Uh, depends on whether or not she has her mage armor, and I don't... She probably does, actually. Her mage armor and, uh, anime are dead every single morning when I wake up. And... Uh, because I saw my great song, I've got an AC of 20. So, no. And plus, you got third cover, uh, half cover, so you should be good. And Milos, does a 16 hit you? Sure, doesn't. Alright. So, these are all done. Polet. Pol oh, no! Um, Milos! Ooh. Okay, so what I'm going to say to that is to do that, you'd be hitting your friends. All of them? <laughs> yep. <laughs> it, okay, it, I don't know she's a bad driver, but like, come on. We're directly between you and the Biomancer. <laughs> yeah. You can hit this other guy. I, I will. Or other people. I will allow. A deck save. I'm blind. <laughs> so a deck save. Could yell out. <laughs> yeah, and you could hear the car. I will allow a deck save with disadvantage for Polaire, but deck save, nonetheless, to avoid the incoming car, and maybe a strength save from Mumford to get Polaire out of the way. <laughs> okay. Are we doing that then? What are we rolling? Milosh, what are you going to do? Uh, that, that's kind of what I've been wanting to see. It just just do it. Just thing. do it. But I don't want to, like, potentially kill. I will allow... I will allow 8d10 of damage. Do it. I don't care if we want to interrogate this person. Just go for it. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna rev up the engine. I'm going to, uh, with my right hand, <laughs> place it over, uh, the battle scanner and say, Well, Karen, you are not allowed to be buckled up. It's buckled up. You just want to be fucking right. <laughs> and I'm just gonna, you know, boom, and just try to plow straight into that. Alright. Hopefully, kill any mighty things. Deck save from Polaire at disadvantage. Mumford, you get. That's an A. <laughs> Mumford. <laughs> Deck save, and if you want, you can try to make a strength save to save Polaire. Oh no! Oh no! Just I did not say advantage. Oh yeah, you get advantage. Yes. Damn, danger sense. Danger sense, more like dad yeah. sense. There we go. You jump out of the way. Pull, you got. You got to make that strength save to save Polaire, though. That's what your boy's gonna do. Yes. Oh. I'm not dead. Okay. So, this you move that way with Polaire. I'm gonna allow one attack of opportunity that misses, and. You guys are right here now. By the way, the image in my head of Lion Dad grabbing Small Son is beautiful. 
Okay. We've done a good thing today. Uh, so, Mom Milos is right over here, along with Val Karen and the skeleton. Uh, I'm gonna have to make deck saves now. Oh, they both fail. They both fail miserably. <laughs> um, can I, can you please roll 8d10? Hell yeah. Manually. I just had to roll 8d8 manually. Well, then maybe you shouldn't have. <laughs> Polar, you feeling a little chilly? I mean, if I didn't, that would be. Do I actually? Would I still feel cold from that? Yes. That was like half a turn ago. Yeah. It's been like 30 seconds, maybe. It's been. So it's 10 rounds for a minute. So it's been about half a second. It's been like three or four turns. Yes, but a, a turn is... Ten turns isn't a minute. Ten rounds is a minute. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm small brain. So how have you all been? Okay, so that is 48 damage altogether. 48. Damn. Cool. This man is still up. How? <laughs> He's looking at Milos menacingly. Um, He's full of rage, that's how. But the yeah. soldier... The soldier that, that attacked Mumford is down. Thing is staring at me menacingly through I, I think the windshield of the car. Milos is just gonna raise his hand and flip it off. Oh no, it didn't oh, nice. it didn't go it did that thing where it goes over the car. <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> uh Polaire, that is you. Oh wait, I should have hey. buff uh constitution saving throw. So, um, uh, you bamf. <laughs> what, word was the, what words were those? Uh, you are immediately teleported. Your blindness is now cured, but you are in the ethereal plane. What? <laughs> oh, you gotta love spells. <laughs> okay, but... Well, at least I can see now. Um, is this, like, the kind of plane where it's, like, completely separated, or I just can't interact with this? You're, it is completely separated. You are very deep into the ethereal plane. Oh, that's fun. Can see seen in shades of gray? Uh, yep. So you can um, you can now see there doesn't seem to be a floor so you're kind of floating around and as you are floating around you're kind of flipping and as you're flipping you see your hand but then you see another hand another hand another hand like there's reverberations I've had too many bad <sighs> mushrooms considering how many bad mushrooms I've had which is to say none but goodness gracious I'm never doing drugs um, um, what do you I do? I can't even do anything, can I? Not really. Like, can I, can I just start meditating to, wait, wait, I'm looking. Yeah, I'm just gonna, after panicking for a solid longer than I'd like to admit, just start meditating because I have nothing better to do and I'm a monk, I guess. You just, you breathe, you relax. And you go into lotus position, keep your hands <laughs> close. <laughs> That's horrible. <laughs> and now it is the soldier's turn. And I'm not in da immediate danger of dying. 
No, not really. You've just been bamfed out of existence. Just can't... Are you saying banished? You haven't been banished. No. What word are you saying? I'm saying bamfed. Like, uh, like, like Nightcrawler, whenever he teleports, it's like... Bam, bam. Oh, cool. Because I see bamf and I just think of B-A-M-F. Give me a second. Like, the oh, acronym. Uh, okay, yeah, I get you. <laughs> Badass motherfucker. <laughs> Which I am, but also, I'm a child, so I can't say that. Okay. Bruce, Bruce, after, <laughs> after Polaire disappears, because Bruce was on his shoulder, Bruce is now, like, had to catch up by flying. So he's like, whoa! Um, so that is the soldier's turn. This guy is going to move over here and try to attack Mumford and miss horribly. I don't have another token for, for a soldier. He's going to go over there and try to start attacking the door and get a critical hit apparently <laughs> Mumford your door is now gone <laughs> oh my door <laughs> oh not Mumford Milo your door is now gone <laughs> Uh, there is, there is a soldier right there. Ooh, okay, so... Would you like to bonus action rage because of your missing son, please? <laughs> I am bonus action raging for many things, and rage, as in many campaigns, is the ongoing term for feeling a lot of upsetting emotions. Exactly. Yes. Oh yeah, because there's also like the whole they used your sister to manipulate you, and that's not cash money. It's not cash money. Uh, does a thirteen hit? Uh, thirteen. Let me just check. Does not. Okay. <coughs> okay. Does a twenty-one? Hit? Yeah, fourteen damage. Yeah. God. Oh no. How much damage? Sixteen. Sixteen. That guy. After you miss that first time, you think, wait, you used my sister. My oh. sister. Boom! You slam the, this axe into br sh cracking his armor, pushing down further and further until you hear the crack of his ribs and he dies. Not a fun way to die. No. That was... A scary. That was a lot. As it to die. So many fun ways I, to die. I'm now just gonna move this guy over here since I don't have a token. Valkyrie. Have a nice day. <laughs> that is you. Can't be. What happened to Samuel and Bruce? I will get- I will remember Samuel and Bruce next turn. I think it's just Samuel with his head sticking in the back of a car. Uh, Bruce is now flying still. Okay, you're gonna- Send Bruce over here and help. Sounds good. I didn't hear that last one. What? Move the token. Oh, move the token. I can't see the token for some reason. What would you do without translators? Uh, probably die. Gonna create a new token. There. Ah. 
Karen, which is going to pop out of the car. Again, I can't move the car. Yeah. And move over to this roof of that. Okay. And I'm going to stab him. Okay. Because I enjoy the Alright, go for an attack. Uh, I'm going to be right here. Oh, uh, wait. I don't think that hits. That does! Lovely. Yeah! God damn, that hurt. Oh, don't sound so cocky about it. One thing to take a hit and be like, oh, that, that kind of sucked, and just like, oh, come on, man. That, that, that was with advantage, because of the I'm just gonna... Uh, that hit down. Uh, 16 does not hit. Okay. Uh, that's my turn. All right, it is the Biomancer's turn. Valkaren, can I please have a wisdom saving throw? Are you casting a spell on me? Uh, yes, casting a spell. I'm going to counter spell. He's going to counter spell your counter spell. Is that how it works? I'm going to accept that. <laughs> Sorry, what? He said a wisdom save. Wisdom save. Yep. Alright, so that is a third level spell slot and a fourth level spell slot. Val, you are now a rat. <laughs> Um, and now it's the thugs' turns. Two of them are gonna go attack past, uh, this guy and attack Mi Milos and the skeleton. That's a miss. If I'm still in the car, would I still get the... Yeah, and, and they still missed. It's fine. Yeah. Mumford... Does a seventeen hit? Yep. Yeah. Uh, that is seven damage. I am down. Good night, everybody. As thanks for coming out tonight. As <laughs> as you're about to attack the next guy to come for you, he just whacks you with a. With a mace, <laughs> like fram, and you're like, oh, okay. Wait, so, <clears throat> so really we have a bat, a rat, a skeleton, <laughs> a mostly dead guy, and Milosh. Yep. Uh, one of these guys is going to take a shot at Valkaren and miss horribly. <laughs> Yeah, I know. All right, uh, Milos, that is you. Oh no! Uh, first it is. Let's go back up. I believe it's it's Samael first, then Milos. Uh, uh, Okay. You're gonna whack the biomancer. All right. Hit. Wait, are you hitting the? You're hitting yourself. All right. Because. <gasps> When you're polymorph, once your HP is reduced to zero, then you revert to your normal form. All right, that's okay. Uh, does Samael have anything else to do? Uh, 
Nope. Milos, that is you now. Okay. Um, how close is the biomonitor to Milos once he gets out of the tower? Um, he is 15 feet, but you're going to have to take an attack of opportunity. Okay, so there's a guy next. Oh, yeah, that's right. There is somebody. Um, so I guess he's just going to step out of the tower okay. and uh, over the soil because it's very menacingly. Um, and Milo's just going to uh, attempt to um, fuck this guy up. Okay, are you activating your axe? Hell yeah. Alright. Your axe heats up runes. G giant runes start to glow in an orangish color. And you feel the heat of your axe. Go for an attack. Okay, but Milosh screaming, be kind, as he, like, smashes people over the head with an axe. Be kind, old wave. <laughs> <laughs> be strong forever. They weren't being kind. I mean, they did use a man's dead sister. Yeah, We're kind so of this is what happened. You weren't kind to get a piece of Milosh's mind. Fifteen? Um, Fifteen against the soldier. New. Fifteen go to hit. New. I think their AC is sixteen. Let's try my second attack. That's not have, you, God damn it. have you considered getting new dice? Uh, Bruce. Like, okay, so here's what I tried. I tried my other dice roll. I'll roll really well. When I'm in combat trying to do something, shut it. Teaching. Bruce, that's you. Yeah. Oh, Bruce. Bruce is going to help again. Okay, Bruce is going to help again. Polaire, yeah. you're still in the ethereal plane. I'm, I'm guessing Can you're... I shadow teleport in the ethereal plane? Uh, sure. Bamf! Oh, you're still <laughs> in the ethereal plane. But I can teleport in this ethereal plane. But as you look back, you see, you see like almost a glowing shadow of where you used to be. Oh, that's legit. Like a. See, that's why you try things. A solid light construct. So that's soldier oh. next. Soldier's gonna take an attack at Milos. Milos does an 18 hit. Yeah, that just hits. Oh, sorry, 19. You know. Wait, wait. Milos, you were also adding that plus 2 to strength, right? Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> I was just making sure. Uh, that is uh, 9 damage to Milos. I don't think anyone was expecting a TPK, but, um... <laughs> Mumford! What good podcast? Can I please have a death saving throw? Yeah, boy. Oh, oh no! Nice if you had the... Well, okay, we have potions this time, I think. Yeah, you have... You have all the potions, though, I believe. Yeah, and I also have the magic relic that stabilizes you when you're dying. <laughs> yep. Val, that's you. It's okay, guys. I have a staff of bird calls. Right. <laughs> I totally forgot you had the staff of bird calls. Oh, now I gotta make... Th I, I like that I gave you a legendary axe and you have a staff of bird calls. Yeah, so we always got the staff. Tweet, tweet. <laughs> tweet, tweet, motherfucker. <laughs> uh, Val... Valkarin, that's you. Right now, the bio 
Korea as we just said in Meg's episode. I'm just going to fly her to over. Okay, uh, there's going to be an opportunity attack. I understand. I'm willing to. Uh, that does, I believe, does not hit. Let me just check. 14 doesn't hit. Indeed. Yeah, I can move your token. Right here. Here. Yeah, thank you. And then... I'm going to the blade. Oh no. That doesn't hit. Uh, is that the end of your turn? Oh wait, let me just have a second. Uh, but for my bonus action, I'm just gonna uh, mentally get involved with someone else. Alright. 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 Magic. Okay. Um. It's gonna be. V Oh, ooh, I have a lot of things. Val, as you fly over, you f and you get there, you suddenly feel the world start to spin. Can I have a wisdom save from you? Okay. Uh, yes, casting a spell. I'm going to find out. Uh, okay. Can you please roll for that? Okay. No. Oh. No. Uh, that does not work. Can I, can I please have a wisdom saving throw? And that unfortunately does fail that. Oh. That's another fourth level spell slot. As you start to f As you start to like land, you feel vertigo. The world starts to twist and turn. I'm going to be breaking the rules if I get the right number. <laughs> Just going to break the rules a bit. Just gonna... Is this news? <laughs> Hurtful! <laughs> I'm just, okay, I'm not saying it like a bad thing. I'm just saying, like, rule following comes second to creativity here. Uh, okay, so that is a three. Val, for the next round, you cannot move. Or take an action. What was the effect? What was the spell? Confusion. Oh. Confusion? Yeah. Uh, thugs are going to start taking attacks. There's one guy near Val. I believe that hit. Uh, that is a 22 to hit. Uh, yeah. yeah that's okay. And that's three damage. And 19 to hit doesn't hit. Milos. Nope, not Milos. Mumford's still down. Having a cool time over here. Yeah, Milos, you're gonna get hit with two attacks. Bad time would be okay, Corral. Milos, you're gonna get hit with an attack, and the skeleton's gonna get hit with an attack. Uh, Milos, I'm guessing a twenty hits. <laughs> no, I was right. Please suck on that. 
and the skeleton gets hit for a <laughs> natural 20, so 22. Milosh, you're going to take, I think, three points of damage. Let me just... I can deal with that. Nope, two points of damage. Even this? Oh my god. And the skeleton gets hit for... Uh, twelve points of damage. Uh, it is Samael's turn. Wait! Oh, okay. No, you were attacking the thug. Yeah, Sam Isle's turn. You said 12 damage. Yeah. Now I'm putting a one hit mark. Yeah. Um, so where exactly is the Biomancer? The Biomancer's still right there. I still have like four guys left. Yeah, and you haven't even hit the thugs. <laughs> He gets advantage. Wait, does the same team not hit? No. Oh, yeah, it does. But I'm just saying he gets advantage because of Bruce. Oh, well, he got a natural 20 that time, so... Yeah. So, please roll 2d6. Val? Yeah. Are you... T okay. Okay, so... 5 plus 2 is 7... At the end of the turn, I'll be back in a sec. Okay. I can talk to you. Alright. Uh, Polaire, you can't do anything. I can use my, uh, bag of tricks to summon something. Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go with... that. Uh, That's a one, so I get a jackal. All right. Since Val is <laughs> just a jackal chilling with me. Val is taking. Val is is gone for a minute. We're gonna take a bit of a break. We'll be back in about two or three minutes. Just want to grab a drink. So you guys just vamp while I'm going to get my drink. I'd be a lot more afraid of this fight if I was actually dead and not in another realm. But I am still afraid, afraid of how this is going to turn out. Uh, at least you can like get a read on everyone's weak points. I can't get to the bottom. What? I thought the first guy flew to the bottom, and not the first guy swiping in the first place. Very cool, but oh well. Are there any ways for me to escape this? Like, one did a blink spell. Oh. Why? I was that way, too. I'm really annoyed. No, you can't go. I think we just have him bloody and be tired. I'm sorry to say that I can't hear most of what you're saying. Not by much. Daddy, do I look? Do I look like Milos is doing okay health-wise. Uh, I brought out six new sets of dice, so hopefully one of them oh. will, uh, <laughs> will actually do justice. No um, justice so for Milos. How okay are you doing um, health, like, numerically speaking? Oh, no, I'm doing fine. I'm not asking you. <laughs> 
Okay, guys, I have a pyro converter on me. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone forgets that Mumford constantly carries a fire. <laughs> I do have a backstory for this that I came up with at like two Okay, oh, I'm going to need to know the backstory wonderful. after the fight. First thing first, Milos. Yeah. Okay, so. Uh, whoa, 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 whoa. No, it's not your turn. I was just trying to hit you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's not your turn. I'm just trying to hit you. Unfortunately, I'll. Still, while I punch you. Unfortunately. Unfortunately, a five does not hit. It doesn't? No. Why is that unfortunate? That's very important. <laughs> unfortunate for Dylan which is still like fortunate because like yeah I get to continue the story technically he should be rooting for us I am rooting for you so you say unfortunately I don't kill you so Mumford death saving throw yep Dad, oh my god! Well, that's Bruce, just... you've done it before. Uh, okay, so we're random rolling characters. <laughs> <laughs> got that on lockdown. Oh no, we're gonna have to find another dad. Val, you can't do anything this turn. It's the Biomancer's turn. If, if we do all survive, you'll be Haley with me, Dad. <laughs> yeah? I have a bonus action. I don't take this action. Okay, do your bonus action. I was going to. All the way up, so. Okay. Yeah. Okay, wait, what are you doing? Misty step. Okay, yeah, that. You You know what? I'm going to allow you to get on top of that building, yes. Brilliant. And you put the confusion spell, right? Yes. Dang it. Well, it's a good thing because after that the confusion spell stops and now it is the Biomancer's turn and what he is going to do <laughs> He is going to have a heart attack <laughs> He's going to Stroke out and he can't do any spells anymore because he can't form the words. He's going to shocking <laughs> grasp the skeleton. No. Uh, does that even work? It does. So, like electricity and calcium. Uh, Vi, does a 21 hit the skeleton? One hit one hit yep, nine damage. The Biomancer, smiling, stares at Milos as he grabs Samael's throat and just, you just see lightning start to form from, from his hand and Samael just sh falls apart. No, he didn't even have a job. Sa Samael is down. I mean, now he can rest in peace again. Rest Maybe in pieces. For now. It's okay, hey guys. Like I said, I've got six new sets of dice. One of them is bound to roll well. <laughs> and now it's the thug's turn. Uh, of course, Milo doesn't die before that. First thug is going to attack Val. That doesn't hit. Second thug is going to shoot at Milos. That doesn't hit. Third thug's gonna shoot at Milos. That doesn't hit. And the fourth thug is going to shoot at Bell. That doesn't hit. All thugs miss. Alright. Oh, thank goodness. Milos! That's you! Try to, you know, chop the 
Yeah, go for it. question. When's Bruce's turn? It's after Milosh. Okay, cool. What'd you roll? Uh, so I've got a six, and then with a, uh, actually, hold on. What's the, no, yeah, uh, the, the six, then plus four because of the strength, and then the modifiers, so that only makes it a ten. Okay, go for your second attack, I guess. Have you used action surge at all? Is that the thing you can do? That is isn't. That is a thing he can do. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge. Uh, yeah, What's I'm going to have to do... Uh... Well, for, first go for your second attack. I did. Okay. This is fine. Uh... You're going to go for a third attack? your proficiency bonus, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> What's your strength to modifier? Plus four now. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, didn't... Yeah. Didn't you roll a six and say you got a ten? Your proficiency is plus three, plus your strength, which is plus four. So that's only thirteen. That still doesn't hit. I'm just saying, like... Milo, you going for that fourth attack? Sure. <laughs> this could be the one. Okay. Here we go. All right, that is a 16 <laughs> health modifiers. So 23. Modifiers, I think I might have actually landed it. Roll roll the massive amount of damage dice I have given you. Uh, you can just roll them together. Oh! Oh! Uh-huh. So this whole time... Yeah! <laughs> if he had landed more than one hit... Yep! <laughs> and... Can we just get Jake to start using... That's, uh, 14 damage? Uh, 14... That's just the base, right? Modifier? Uh, oh, no. That was, uh, okay, so with modifier, that'd be, uh, what did I say? Again? You said 14. 14. Okay, because then it'd be 18. Oh, okay, yeah. You split this guy in half into a searing oh, mess. Oh, great. Is, 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 is this oh, the no. biomancer? No. <laughs> it was the soldier oh. that was in front of Milos for the longest well, time. at least we got one guy. <laughs> that guy's down. Um, so, Milo, is she gonna move it all? Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna move it into the biomarker. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> sounds good. Um, okay. Bruce. Help? He's gonna help. <laughs> Elo just needs all the help he can get. Except, <laughs> except Mumford needs healing. Yeah. Medicine check. Bruce can stabilize. Please, hmm? please. <laughs> I don't want to lose another death. <laughs> I am so scared for this. Yeah, so am I, man. I am... Thank you, Milo. 
Uh, Polaire, you can't do anything. What are you gonna do? Okay, uh, roll medicine check for Bruce first. Can I, like, send through time and space that my dad is in danger? 15? That makes it! <gasps> I'm still alive. I think Bruce is now um, here. <laughs> Seriously? Oh my god. Um, Polaire, what are you gonna do? Um, is the light thing from the last time I pooped still there? No, it's, it just slowly starts to fade away now. Cool. Um, can I just like teleport a bunch of times and just? There was something that I thought about doing. You sure? You um, bamf, 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 and you see, you see. I play, can I play catch with myself? Like I throw some, I throw my crowbar, and then teleport to catch it, okay. and then I throw it back to where I was. Okay. <laughs> Oh, I have a jackal. So yeah, I, can, I don't think I want to throw that for him, though. I okay. don't have much else that I can throw this. Okay, year. so what I'm going to allow is I'm going to allow you to play this game of catch. Uh, you're going to have to make a dexterity saving throw when you bamf and ca try to catch the crowbar, though. Are we just calling it bamfing now? Yes, we're calling it bamfing. Oh, 14. Don't know her. Now I roll well. <laughs> you catch it. You toss that was it a back. Five for our darling audience. <laughs> yep. Uh, soldiers are dead. Mumford's back. Val, that's you. What? Sorry, what? Yes. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Done. Alright. Um that's the biomancer's turn. Which one's the biomancer? The one under Bruce? Yeah. Milosh? <laughs> Can I have a wisdom save? And actually, that, Val, can I have a wisdom save as well? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna stick with my first time, so no, you can't. <laughs> oh no. Milos. <laughs> it's not a one, it's not a one. What'd you roll? It's also not good What'd you roll, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> You're paralyzed. Which is not a one. <laughs> it's one plus one. You're paralyzed. It's and... twice that. Yeah. Oh. It's one better. Yeah. Milo. <laughs> I'll do you one better. <laughs> Milo, you're paralyzed for the duration of the spell as you are. Ca and Val, I'm guessing the spell misses you. Yeah. All right. Okay. Thugs now have advantage on me, Losh. Mm. <laughs> no, they don't. No, they don't. I don't think that's how that works. Yeah, they're, they're so terrified that I still want them in high, but it's like... Uh, 19 hits me, correct? Yeah. That's 5 damage to me, That miss that guy misses. Uh, twenty hits Milos. Seven damage. That misses Milos. Val, can you please roll your D twenty? That guy hits a mirror image. Uh, wait, what did you roll for? 
Oh, okay. If the mirror image is in a place. Uh, Milos, can I please have a... Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, they miss! Uh, Milos, can I have a wisdom save? Sure. I moved in a spit dick. <laughs> Milos, you are still paralyzed. This is fun. Bruce, that's you. Going down. We're, We're yelling, yelling timber. Down. Oh no, we can't do that. Actually, if we are parodying or karaoke, we can't. Huh. Because it I is gonna... from our own now. Okay. Bruce helps. Polar, you're continuing to play catch. Please make a wisdom <laughs> please make a dexterity saving throw. <laughs> <laughs> you still catch it. Oh. How, how about you give me some of those high rolls, man? You That's... Did, like, shitty oh. Mumford, no, I don't even you're ask still down. Val, that's you. I'm going to play for the Okay. And I'm going to whack you in my way. Okay. You have advantage. <laughs> okay, hits. And hits. Biomancer's not <laughs> looking too good. That makes one of us. <laughs> Sorry, what'd you say, Val? Concentration. I do not, not believe anything was said. Uh, Milos, you are out of par paralysis. Brilliant. Woo oh wait, never mind. No, you're not. Why would you play with our emotions like that? Oh, <laughs> uh, because it's fun. Why would you do it? Of all people ever even. <laughs> it is the Biomancer's turn. There's still like four snipers left. Yup. Um, Val, can I have a constitution save? No, you cannot. Does that that doesn't make it? Give me a second as I go through my big bag of dice. Oh, we're gonna listen to you brush your dice teeth again. Uh, there it is. Oh no! Yeah, yeah, it hit too. Oh no! Val, please take 21 points of poison damage. <laughs> what? 21. Oh no! <laughs> Me, um... Thugs. Those are thugs. Uh. So no thanks. <laughs> uh, nineteen. Milos. Yeah. Nineteen. You know that hit. Val, roll your d twenty. Doesn't hit. 
Uh, Milos, you are lucky. Am I? Yeah, you are. Milos, that is you. How are you doing on health, by the way? Uh, I mean, I'm still in double digits. Uh, same about uh, kind of in the mid range of my health. I mean, Val Karen's also in double digits. Yeah, it's you. Alright, let's try this guy. Uh, so I'm gonna try to make you go for uh, Spinal Monster. Okay. Oh, yes! That was fucking max 20. There we go! So that is 2d8 and 6d6. All right, Milos, you raise your axe up. You kind of twist the handle a bit, and when you twist the handle a bit, the axe turns from like a glow, the runes glowing to the whole axe head just turning into a bright red burning axe, and you just <laughs> slice this guy first in half, coming from the waist, and then you slice down. I'm glad the children weren't there to see that. <laughs> he is down. That my monster? Yeah. Fuck yeah. Oh, thank goodness. Uh, the, the closest thug to you is about... 20 feet away. Can the like, run away? You know what? Roll intimidation. Oh, please. I will. I will also allow you to use your strength modifier for this. You rolled another nat 20? So, I got a 16, but with my strength modifier, that is a, that made it a 20. Uh, and then with uh, some in, um, proficient intimidation, that bumps it up to 18. So. Alright, you know what? I will I allow it. I, did my math I will allow it, and they start to all flee. All right. First things first, we're going to head to the ethereal plane with Polaire. Pol Polaire, as as you're playing catch with yourself, you see a person in almost like desert scavenger clothing, like with the like scarf Urban. over over the head. The the goggles, and they say, Who are you? And you just hear, Yeah, who are you? Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? Just whispers. It's chemical, isn't it? Wait, this guy asked me? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, hi, I'm not supposed to be here. I'm Polaire. No shh. Send me back to... What? I mean, I can try, but... It'll be hard. Okay, so, okay, better question. Who are you and why are you here? Do you have a shtick, I'm sure? I, uh, I'm just the jailer for the ethereal plane. Oh, of course, there's, you're a jailer. Um, so people are jailed here? Yeah, the worst of the worst are jailed here. Oh, yeah, I'd like to not be here then. Actually, one of our guys just escaped. 
are you? I'm picking up what you're putting down. Um, can, do you know how he escaped? Like, where, or like, did he do it, or was it somebody else? Did he have help? I don't know. He just escaped, and there was a light to the realm of humans and monsters, and he somehow got to it. We tried to stop him with all our harpoons, but they just he just went through it. Cool. Um, cause I all I I kind of need to get back my friends and who did and whatnot. Well, I can. I'm We're in the middle of a big battle, you know. I'm sure I can get you back. Um. Yeah. I'm going to need to need you to not tell anyone about this place. Um, I would like to respect your wishes, but I also want to understand why you have those wishes. All right, here's what I'm going to do. He takes out a small notepad and he hands it to you. This will tell you everything about the Ethereal Plains Jail. And why you shouldn't tell anybody about it. You shouldn't tell anybody. You shouldn't tell anybody. You shouldn't tell anybody. You got, the, you got that cool echo effect going. I, I appreciate that budget. Um, oh, that's, n that that's not me. That's... Oh. That's just all of the... Uh people trapped in here plural you y'all yeah y'all got a cool thing going thanks um, uh but since i'm not mentally prepared to handle this uh can i just um get on out of here and leave you to your business yeah sure uh he grabs some salt rubs it on his hand are you willing to leave Am I willing? Yes. And he casts Banishment. No Charisma save since you are willing. Cool. And you were brought back into the realm of Altonia with a notebook in your hand. Does anyone want... Was... Would anyone like to investigate the battlefield? Um, I'd, I'd like to investigate because I wasn't here for anything, uh, so, you know. How is, uh, is Mumford back up and good to go? Mumford is not back up and good to go. Okay, I'm going oh, to, heck. uh, try to stabilize him or... Try he's, to are, he's stable, he just is unconscious. Then um, maybe we should kind of, like, throw uh, Mumford over his shoulder. I have potions... <laughs> I don't know. I'm your no, no. Child runs over to dad. Uh, you're Sorry, gonna. Pal. Can you please roll a uh, investigation check then, Val? And uh, Bruce's gonna help. Yep. Do you get advantage? Nice. You find. Um, well, you, well. you find in oh, the biomancer's bag. A small leather bound notebook with a golden orb on the front, kind of like a latch. And. Okay. Can everyone hear me? I can hear you. Okay. Okay, so you find a small leather bound notebook with a golden orb as a latch and primordial runes ar around that golden orb. I would like I'm to... I'm and Val, could you please add to your inventory the Tome of Altonian History? Okay. 
Can you tell? Um, can I run over to my dad <laughs> with concern and love in my eyes and <laughs> use some potion? Yes. Uh, Mumford, please roll 8d4 plus 8. That's a lot of fours, dude. Yeah. Yes. Sorry. A lot of four sixes, you could say. God damn it. <laughs> and as you open up the Tome of Valtonian Knowledge, you see it is, it says, written by... Coracle Hyperion. And Polaire, I will give you, I will make an, well, actually, I will tell you what's in the book when you read it. But, guys, you just fought your first boss fight. Yeah. And we almost and died. Surprisingly, we all survived. Yeah. One, two of us. Yeah. Two. Two. Get the shittiest rolls actually killed the dude. Uh, Milos, can I have an investigation check from you? Can I also make an investigation check? Yes, you can make an investigation check. Milos, this investigation check is not for the battlefield. This is for... Oh, I got a four. You find nothing. Um, okay, so what are you saying about the investigation? It is not for the battlefield before you. It is for your axe. As it is still glowing red. Okay, you guys ready for this? Yes. Six. Yes! Oh my god. Oh. Well, wow, this seems pretty damn normal. Yeah. I mean, I catch fire and glow all the time. Yeah. Some LEDs. <laughs> Mumford, you see your father's car? Mm. Uh, make a history check for me. Fifteen. That den didn't used to be there. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> this car. Sorry, my Discord crashed. Oh my god, we can hear you! Yeah! Um. Mumford. <laughs> this car looks familiar. You don't remember from where. My head hurts too much. Polaire, no. can you please roll a history? Can you please roll a history check for me? That's another four. <laughs> Am I still slung over Milos's shoulder? I tried to cancel out that by. I didn't even Milo's say. Milo. Yeah, sure. You know what? Yes. Cool. I'm playing dead. Night, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, wh what are you guys going to do? You've got a couple of opportunities to, to kind of seize here. You could find a way to interrogate one of those thugs and f figure out who hired them. Can I run after one of them? Yeah. They, like, run off? Yeah, sure. Uh, Polar, make a dexterity check with advantage. Fourteen. Yeah, you make it to him. I'm gonna allow you to tackle him. So make an unarmed strike. Wait, who are you tackling? One of the thugs. A guy who's running oh, off. Okay. That just hits. You 
You <laughs> go for him, you jump down, you miss his whole body, but you got his leg, and you trip him. And he's like, wait, wait, I, I'll tell you, I'll tell you anything you want. Uh, just don't kill me, please, don't kill me. Wow, they really ran out of budget for you guys. I'd like to know who you work for. Um, uh, give me a second, I got names for you. <laughs> He takes out his phone, he takes out a pen, he just scrolls through. Um, so... Did he get his reading glasses? <laughs> he, he just pulls out from his leather coat, like, this, these glasses with, like, two other, like, lenses that kind of move down. And he puts them on, and he's like... Oh my gosh. <laughs> he's 35! Val, I'm going to allow you to attune that item without a long rest. So if you want to do that now, you can. Brilliant. Uh, you should have now an expertise in history. Yep. Someone named Razencore hired hired us Hired, hired the Elven Mafia, I think. I don't, I don't really know. I I just work for them. And... Uh, I don't suppose you know how to spell Rosencore? I actually do. Could, could, could you just hit me up? Yeah, sure. Give me a sec. H-M-U. There, Rosencore. Uh, Val... Oh, I was really close. Yeah. Close. Val, close. can I please have a history check once you hear the word, the name Ravencore? He's gonna be such an immortal. Twenty-one. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Ravencore. From what? When you start reading the Tome of Altonian Knowledge, it's you find it to be a fast read. As you're like reading, you just <laughs> blaze through the pages and Razencore, 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 the former king of the country of Sign, Razencore, was. Brought up as a, an elven male, he isn't though. He is half elven of Holocene descent. And... <laughs> and what happens is... He went mad with power as he was leader of the country of Sign, he enslaved his people and made them basically constantly ready for war. Which turned out to be his downfall in the sense that when the rebellion came for the country of R Sign, he almost got split in half by then Rebellion leader. Give me a second. If I can find. Wave. Wave Crin. No, not Wave Crin. Sorry. So many names. Where is my. Dragonborn. Is he that one guy? Yeah. By Garen, the white dragon. He wasn't split in half, though. As he was 
morphed and created into this being of life-sucking energy. He... From what you can tell, he started the Elven Mafia and left. But now he's back in the country of Kinsland. Ready for revenge. <laughs> I'm sorry, Val, what was that? I'm just going to tell all of them this. Okay. Razencore believes he is the f he is the true king and what he has been doing is he has been taking out all of the royal guard candidates which is why Lotus died first oh wait what what was why Lotus died first? Because he was taking out... All of the candidates for the Royal Guard. Because if... It, it, Lotus was just the first on the list? No, Lotus was the first one to die that affected you guys. Oh. Solid. Mumford. You get a phone call. I'm going to answer it. <laughs> the <deaf voice. laughs> Felix okay. and I are both answering it. I'm on his shoulder. <laughs> um, hello, Mumford. This is the coroner's office. Oh. Do you want to hear the bad news first? Um... This is all bad news. Thank you. Uh, for some reason, we have somehow lost the body of Lotus. I have found it by the cataclysm. Did it morph into what's your face? Yeah, it was. Oh. It was the ultra self spell. So no, you haven't found it. I have not found it. <laughs> <laughs> I have found it. I have not found it. Um, from security cameras, it seems an elven male came into the building, and it seems that Lotus was resurrected. Yes. Did you see where she went? No. no. Oh. No, it is not. I'm trying to catch up on my notes right now, and it's really hard. Because we were just fighting, and then suddenly we got the plot dump. Um, oh, brain is not today, uh, was he acting funny at all? It's extremely hard to say since we don't really know how she came back to life and we weren't there to talk to her when she did. Where was the elven guy when she was, like, was he the one who did it? Uh, where was the elven guy? Uh, he seemed to be standing over the body. Oh, I have a So it was definitely who did it. <laughs> okay, because, um... Can you identify the male? Oh, can you identify the male? Elf. Was he an envelope or Manila? <laughs> what? 
Did you just ask us, ask us if he, he was an envelope or a manila? Yes. I don't know what the bigger ones are called. <laughs> that's actually a good point. Like, this, what are, they're still called envelopes, but... I don't think this is the time. The big boy envelopes. Can you identify the elf? Can you identify the Elf, I'm not supposed to be part of this conversation, but I am hijacking it anyway. <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure we can send you a picture of the elf. Thank you. That's a start. I'm sure if he were on police files, he would have said something already. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a child with you? <laughs> My son, in fact. Oh, your son is very sassy. I've been watching a lot of TV dramas lately. It's fine. Uh, he's crime, also you know. very smart. Yes. Um, we will keep you updated, and we will send you that picture of the elven male. Thank you. You can expect the call from my lawyer. <laughs> I will say the Atlas household does have a team of lawyers. Well, I meant, like, I would call him so I could ask him a bunch of weird questions myself as a child, but, you know. We could sue the Elven Mafia, guys. <laughs> yeah. That's the way... Can we actually do that? That's actually, like, a great way to... That's not the phone. The phone? That's not the phone. Well, he kind of, like, tax evasion. Yeah. That's how they got him. Yeah. Then the fifth one. Um. Since they don't know that the former king Razencore is alive, in fact, and also. How do we know that? Oh wait, because you said Razencore was gonna. Okay. Um. The tome of no. This guy. The tome of knowledge has given you that. Okay, so the guy that I just tackled, is he working, like, is he direct part of the Mafia? Yeah, he's like, uh, um, yeah, I'm, I'm part of the Mafia. Pretty low level. Cool. Do you want to hang out in our basement with the one chick we caught? <laughs> Not particularly. <laughs> no, oh, basement. dang, I thought the phrasing would get him. Um, <laughs> uh, Barton is also very nice and he has good food there. Can try and either that or we give you, hand you over to the cops or you'll probably be assassinated. That's true. That's probably true. Um, do you have cookies? Oh, yeah, we got loads of those. Oh, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll totally. Um, are you going to tie me up? No. You guys just murdered my whole crew, so probably not. Well, I mean, there are like three of them over there. <laughs> I, I can change that. <laughs> okay, okay. You know what? I'll ju I'll just I'll, I'll I'll stick with you guys. It's fine. <laughs> cool. But, <laughs> Does um... Val Karen actually tell call him a coward? Under her breath. Roll a stealth check. I mean, he totally squealed before I even asked him anything. So, like... He rolled a 21. Oh. That's not very nice. <laughs> I'm trying my best. Look, you guys got what you wanted. I didn't even want... I don't even like working here. Oh, hey, maybe we can give you a job. Oh, oh really? We, like, clear your... It's fine. We'll, we'll figure something out for you. Oh, uh, let's go. Thanks. Excellent. Should we check something else out first? Like, I don't know. My... Check out the area first. Sense is tingling. What do you want to check out? Okay, it's 
so no one really looked at the crater, but like that's kind of been a thing that people regularly visit casually. Yeah. Can I just... Mm. It's kind of... Uh, so here's the thing. The thing about the crater is most... Everybody who comes here mo lost somebody during the cataclysm. Mm -hmm. Whether it was a family member, a friend... That uh, can I check out the crater then? Since, you know, you tend to be lost in a mass of emotions when you... Yeah, sure, you can totally check out the crater. What do you want to? What do you want to do? Um, can I like walk? Okay, how deep is the crater? Like, is it like a sheer drop? It's not a drop. It's hills. Is it like it, 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 it's a steep drop up until like fifteen feet down, and then it's like a hill. But it, it still goes for a good hundred and fifty feet. It's a big crater. I'm gonna walk around the edge, like where, kind of like around where we were, and then head toward it. Okay. Uh, also considering jumping in. Uh, can I please have a deck save? No. 24. That makes it. You see a couple of the robot, robot like security guards try to stop you. <laughs> Don't stop me! <laughs> no! <laughs> I'm very respectful of all the bad things that have happened at, here at this place, as I. And as you place. skid down, do you go straight to the center? Um, kind of like a curved path, so it's like kind of skirting the edge and then getting, but still getting closer as I go. As you get closer, your eyes kind of flicker, almost as if there's an illusion here. And as your eyes flicker, you, you, <laughs> You get close to the center and closer and closer and closer and you see a, a bright blue, almost ethereal ghost type thing with like something, he's attached to something on the ground and you see a small rock. Can I have a wisdom saving throw? See, I was about to ask, is this the illusion, or is this the thing that the illusion is covering up? But that's a 19. Uh, I've done an okay save for once. You don't, you don't get affected by it, whatever, you, but you still see this. And you do know this as... Yeah, this, this is the thing that the illusion is covering up. How close am I now? You're about 30 feet from the center. Uh, can I get a little closer and look closer at the spirit? Yep. He doesn't seem to notice you. He seems to just be guarding this one rock. What does the rock look like? <laughs> it looks like a small chunk of meteorite with a little bit of like quartz and ruby and emeralds like coming out of like orifices huh. I could have but I didn't want to I'm just laughing at Gray's reaction. <laughs> 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 I 
Mumford, do you see your son just run into the crater? Yeah, I, pr I probably do, depending on which way I'm facing over here. <laughs> Roll a history check with advantage, by the way. Do you remember your son's negative attention span? I got a 12, so do you remember mine? <laughs> you you also lost someone due to the cataclysm. Wasn't that like some Secret Arthur? Arthur? <laughs> Let me finish, for the love of God! I'm sorry, I've been thinking about Secret Arthur for a lot. And it's not, it wasn't, it, my nose. <laughs> it was not direct, like, someone didn't die from the cataclysm, but your brother, Arthur, kind of, what's the word I'm looking for? Enlisted. Mm. Um, in a war. He enlisted himself in, in a war on the continent of Braille, and he thought he could. Not Braille. Sorry, wrong continent. Oh, what's he got? What's his problem with blind? Wait, so a secret Arthur was Mumford's brother? Yeah. Oh my god. And he enlisted himself in a war. I do have the wars written down. I have not finished the textbook, but I have the wars. I'm still going through the Siege of Area Shire, so it's, it's a lot. Wow. Um. Uh, not Lost in Beer, but the country. Uh, yes, Zalar. A, co a country in Zalar that is the war is still going on and there there were some rumors that one of their wizards caused the cataclysm I'm sensing some political undertones here I don't know what you're talking about <laughs> anyway Claire, as you are kind of looking at the spirit, make a wisdom save. This is where I die. It's not going to be where you die. Eight. As you get closer and closer to the spirit, you cut, you almost touch it, and when you do. Images flood through your memory. It's not really your memories, but they just flood through your brain, and it's too much. Please take th uh, eight points of psychic damage as you are <clears throat> as images flood through your head. You learn that. This war on Zalar is for nothing. As it wasn't someone from Zalar that caused the meteor swarm. It was one of Razencor's agents. And this spirit is that man's brother. Razencore's brother did it? No, not Razencore's brother. The wizard who caused the meteor swarm to hit. His brother. His brother did... Oh, the, wait. The brother's doing what? Okay. The, the brother is like the sentinel? Okay, let me try this again. I'm missing a verb here. <laughs> Razencore's agent caused... The Cataclysm. Yes. This spirit is his brother who tried to stop him. Oh. 
He pleaded with him. He, he, as the man was casting the spell, he tried to stop his hand from going, raising to the sky. And when the meteor hit, all of that regret washed out and became the spirit. And this was the last of the meteor that hit. this is the dragon's heart nope that was mostly a joke this is not the dragon's heart okay good because just figured I'd ask it is of magical importance and if you if you do take it and by the way the spirit is now gone okay cool but if you do take this magical like meteorite um there are people that can form it into a magical item of artifact or lower or you can take it to a tech master and what they can do is they can safely embed this magic into a different item or piece of tech that would allow you to make some make a, a magical thing happen like that rusty sword that we got yep I'm kind of reluctant to take such a historical object or something like that but I'm just gonna yoink the rock you yoink the rock <laughs> and as you yoink the rock Everything falls apart. I'm sorry, everyone. <laughs> Mumford, Milosh, Pol <laughs> Milosh, and Val, can I please have perception checks? That's 20, baby. Oh my god. Congrats, dude. Mumford, you don't notice anything. Val, you do notice something. Let me go down the list. Milosh. You've been to the meteor meteor site before. You've this is if you go that way, you can find Harry's noodles. I love Harry's noodles. It's the best noodles. Shop in my house. All of city we are in is name I do not know. <laughs> but as you look at the meteor site, when Polaire takes the rock, you see ghosts or images of what happened that day you see the people everywhere who were just walking around you see them walking around the site and then you see this man raise his hand up and you see his brother try to stop him and then the meteor strike and it kind of rewinds and goes back. But when you when you go to look at one of the spirits, the spirit looks back at you. Oh. I have done a big oops. <laughs> like it wipes out the people and then it rewinds to before the meteor hit. And the people are moving again. Aren't they, like, above my head? Yeah, they're above you. And I'm privy to this, correct? You can see them moving. Like, you can yeah. see you can see them moving. Mumford. I think this rock was a bad idea. Mumford. What's up? You see a bird. What? <laughs> cool. <laughs> And it just hits a glass window. <laughs> Less cool. Tragedy for Val. Val, you go to talk to one of these spirits and you... What do you say to one of these spirits? Oh, you say that was me? Yes. Hello. You go up to a, like, a child playing with a ball. He, like, takes the ball, he bounces it. Oh, hi! 
What's your name? My name is Andy. Hello, Andy. I'm Val Karen. Hi, Val Karen. You, you, you have very pretty wings. Thank you. Very <laughs> and Andy is gone. And the, um, I can't. Uh, can I put the rock back to see what happens. You try to put the rock back in its exact spot. And since no one can ever put things in their in the exact spot they were in, yeah. it's still going. Who wants to leave before I feel any more guilty for ruining everything? But because I'm sure some old person's gonna come here to remember their dead husband, and then they're gonna see him, and they're gonna met their. <laughs> Well, stop trying to take my stuff, Milo. Uh, Milos, <laughs> you do see a nor like a normal person, and you see them look to their left and see their see their partner and break down in tears, and the partner kneels <laughs> down with them, holds their arm and cries with them, and then the meteor <laughs> Breaking news! Idiot kid just caused a bunch of people a whole lot more emotional trauma. More at 11. <laughs> uh, Polaire, do you climb out of the... <laughs> um, I would like to stealth out of the... Roll an acrobatics check and a stealth check. I'll say that makes it. And a 22 for stealth. You get in the car. Acrobatics okay. Now let's go. Now let's go. <laughs> this is a bad idea. Okay, see, part of my thought process was okay, I should leave it, then something, because otherwise something bad could happen. And then I was like, well, someone else could come along and do the same thing, except then they're going to use some magic for evil. So, lose-lose. Uh, do you all get into the car? Yeah. Yeah. Goodbye, Andy. Goodbye, Val Karen. Uh, is, is the car that I ran the Biomancer, is that still on, like, running? Oh, no. No, no, no. No. Okay. Then, yeah, I'll help in the car with everybody else. Uh, who is driving? Milos, of course. <laughs> Mi Alright. Milos, can I have a dexterity check? How damn right you can. <laughs> <laughs> Notice I'm not saying with proficiency. <laughs> you don't get proficiency with this. <laughs> you you turn the car into drive when you meant reverse. <laughs> Supposed to move the stick the other way. Do not kill the captain. How to drive this ship? Everyone, please buckle in. Okay, make another dexterity check, Milos. <laughs> Uh, you get out of the parking spot, uh, <laughs> and then hit, and then you hit, um, another, the mirror off. Uh, Milos, please make I'm another like dexterity check. I'm like in the back seat, <laughs> trying not to think about the terrible thing I have just broken. Okay, you said another uh, dexterity. dexterity. All right. Back to a seven. You hit a couple cars. 
<laughs> you just hear, who's gonna pay for my car? You, apparently. I'm gonna, like, just kind of shout things in giant. <laughs> you just hear in giant, well, fuck you, too. You didn't even go to Harry's Noodles. I could go to Harry's Noodles. Wait, is that near the Bonnie? Yeah, it's nearby. Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah. We, we all deserve a good bowl of noodles. Okay, I'm gonna have you roll a dexterity I, check I with this I don't deserve a good bowl of noodles! <laughs> we deserve noodles. I'll pay for it. Dexterity check with disadvantage. <laughs> you crash into the wall of Harry's noodles. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I said disadvantage. Are you sure you didn't say advantage? <laughs> I heard you say advantage. There was just a dis in front of it. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking too. I think there was. I think there was like a dis, like a. Someone's audio was messing up or something. This with advantage. <laughs> no, no, I. This with no advantage. No, no, no I. Advantage with no dis. No, no, I said disadvantage, Milos. Did you? <laughs> yes, I did. I don't know. Everyone else. Let's go eat it. some noodles. Um, right? you crash into the wall of Harry's noodles. Harry comes out. What is happening? We should take public transportation home. Yeah. He, he just got done fighting monsters in, in tissue, tissue bug people. Uh, say good day and we are hungry and want your delicious noodles. Uh, hello, Milos. And it is okay. Uh, little lion man is He is, he is very welcome. <laughs> Mumford, what do you say to Milo telling you to pay for the wall? I say, I think say, you know, Mumford. I say Mumford. <laughs> Mumford, how do you feel about your dad being voluntold to pay for the wall? I'm going to tell you how that conversation is going to go right now. Bad? You what? <laughs> so what you're saying is you have destroyed two, not one, but two of my cars. And you drove into a noodle shop's wall? And we ruined it now. And you ru ruined a national monument. Yeah, but this conversation is hypothetical, so I don't have to worry about you getting mad at me. Okay, so Rebecca Coon got the first car. That's why our first car is... Okay. This is... The first car Milos drove into bad guy who is about to attack your son and friends and Milos saved them. Well, you're, you're welcome, uh, and Black Raccoon gets get to uh, uh, carrying down the arrows of cut. Um, Polaire. Are, yes? are you reading the book? Yeah, sure. Okay. Since I want to distract myself from the mistakes <laughs> I've made. So. And educate myself. As you read through this book. You learn that this, the ethereal plane has been be, been used as a prison for about 500 years. And what happens is, they de when they, since they don't have the death penalty in either, in uh, here, 
as a continent. They've just been sending people like it's the fan- Phantom Zone into the Ethereal Plane. But the Ethereal Plane is not the prison. Is it, there's like a prison within the Ethereal Plane? The prison is the Jailer's Mind. Oh, I should write that down. So what they do is they bring the jailer out. He has to meditate for an hour to open up his mind and let the this person into it. And I feel so sorry for this dude. Yeah, but it's not just him. There have been multiple jailers. I believe each mind can hold about... 500 people? Uh, oh. If... Um, also, is there mortality in the astral plane? Like, can you just die of old age? Not the astral plane, the ethereal plane. That's what I meant. Yes, there is mortality, which is why humans are very... are not really chosen to be jailers. It's mostly elven people. I will say some of them, they are being imprisoned themselves, as the ethereal plane can be, is kind of hard to escape from. Uh, the, these pe- the people that are acting as jailers, some of them do believe Ravencourt is still the true king of Kier slash Eltonia. One little bit of info dumping this session. A lot of bit. You should. Do you want my notes just from this? That is a pretty different option. It's like a screenshot and a half in its own. On its own. So. You guys order food. You pay about. Five gold for all your meals because it's about ten what? silver each. Um, it's really it's good food. Together. Yeah, it's all together, and it's really good food. Like, yeah, there are some good noodle bowls and like some noodle soup, but Milo orders like a borscht, and it just gets slammed on the table as this giant bowl of stew, and you guys take some. And it smells amazing. Right. Camilo uh, just kind of like uh, basically uh, just grab the whole bowl and just start like drinking it. All right, and I will say, I'm gonna yeah, I will say that is a good stopping point. So we will see you guys next time for another episode of Not Good Enough. Thank you for watching, and bye. Ooh.